And just as Michael Scott believed in the power of diversification when we invested in a pyramid scheme. <laughs> hey everyone, my name is Venerin, and in this video we're going to have a look at the first free for commercial use instruction tuned large language model Dolly 2.0. First, we're going to have a look at the original blog post by Databricks. Then we're going to have a look at the Hugging Face repository that contains the model and an instruction text generation pipeline. We're going to use everything that the authors are providing within a Google Co-op notebook. So I'm going to give you the setup for that. And finally, we are going to do a comparison between Dolly 2.0 and ChatGPT. Let's get started. This is the release blog post by Databricks on Dolly 2.0. And it says that this is free Dolly introducing the worst first truly open instruction tuned large language model. So what this means is that you can use this model even for commercial uses. So this is the first that is trying to emulate ChatGPT and similar models into something that you can use for free. So it says that today we're releasing Dolly 2.0, the first open source instruction following LLM or large language model, fine-tuned on a human generated instruction data set licensed for research and commercial use. So the Dolly 2.0 is a 12 billion parameter language model that is based on a model that is PTA. And this is essentially a large language model that is open sourced by your letter AI. And if you're not familiar with these types of models, it was essentially trained on the pile. And this is uh, 800 gigabytes or more of diverse text for language modeling. And here you can see that the guys uh, have also a complete paper about the data set. And this data set is pretty huge. So furthermore, we are releasing open sourcing the entirety of Dolly 2.0, including the training code, the data set and the model weights, all suitable for commercial use. So once again, you can use this in a commercial setting. And here they talk about the Dolly 15K dataset, and they are essentially giving you the information that the employees of Databricks were able to generate this dataset. And this was what the guys were training on. And here we have further more details about the dataset. We set up a contest where the top 20 labelers would get a big award. So they had seven specific tasks, open question and answer, like why do people like comedy movies? So open questions and answers. Then closed one, you have to look through for some information within a given text, then extract information. You have to copy a paragraph from Wikipedia, summarize, brainstorm, so generate some ideas, classification, and then creative writing. So this task would include things like writing a poem or a love letter. Okay, so here we have some examples and you can look through those on your own. And it says that the Databricks Dolly 15K is generated by professionals in high quality and contains long answers to most tasks. So they're essentially describing their dataset compared to previous datasets that were open sourced and free. Here they have some more examples and then near the end, as a technical and research artifact, we don't expect Dolly to be state of the art in terms of effectiveness. So they don't need or they don't want to tell you that this will be at the level of GPT-3, ChatGPT or GPT-4. However, we do expect Dolly and open source data set will act as a seed for multiple or follow up works, which might serve to bootstrap even more powerful language models. So this is essentially the beginning and they're giving the, the birth of the open, the truly open source and free models. And here they're talking about the Databricks Hugging Face repository and where you can download the model. On the Hugging Face site, you can see that there is a summary of the model again with what the model is. And then you have a reference to the data set and to the instruct GPT paper. They're giving an overview of the model and then what is required to use this model. We're going to see this in a Google Co-op book in a bit. And then they're essentially giving you a fast way to do this, to do some inference with the model. But I don't like this approach since they want us to trust remote code. So this might not be good if you're using this in private setting. So 
they are giving us an alternative. If you prefer to not use trust remote code, you can download instruct pipeline. Yeah, so this is what we are going to do. And then we're going to initialize a tokenizer and then uh, auto model for causal language modeling. And then we're going to use this instruct text generation pipeline. Let's have a look at the pipeline. So this is the pipeline that we are going to get. And this is pretty much the template or the format of the prompts. So we have some intro, instruction key, instruction, and then response key. So intro burp. So this is the intro that is giving to the model. Below is an instruction that describes the task where write a response that appropriately completes the request. And then you have the instruction, then the response, and then end at some of the points. So what this this type of code is doing the pipeline is mostly looking for the response at the end. Once the model has done its predictions, you can see that they're using the generate pipeline, which is very similar to what other generative models are doing. And one of the most important part are the post processing. So what they're doing is essentially using uh, regular expressions to look for the response and then for the end key in order to extract the response of the model. So this is pretty much the instruct pipeline. I have a Google Co-op notebook that is unfortunately running Google Co-op Pro. Since we are going to need a GPU that contains more than 20 gigabytes of RAM. As you can see, I've already loaded the model and it requires just the loaded for the just the loaded model of 24 gigabytes. So you need Google Co-op Pro or you might run on your own machine. The first thing that I'm doing here is to use or install the Accelerate library and then the Transformers library. This is pretty much done from the original Databricks instructions. Then I'm getting the file for instruct pipeline. This is the same file that we've looked through in the previous part. And then I'm importing TextRap instruct pipeline. For this, from this pipeline, I'm importing the instruction text generation pipeline. Then from the transformers, the auto model, and then the auto tokenizer, and then torch. First, I'm having this function that is going to print the responses of the model and wrap them into 100 characters, which is using the text wrap library from Python. And then we're loading the tokenizer and the model and the instruction generation pipeline. So first I'm doing the auto tokenizer, just passing in the path to the hugging face repository, to the tokenizer, and then the model. The important thing here is that we want to load the model in using binary float 16. So this will really speed up the processing and the requirement of the VRAM. And then the device map auto is going to make sure that it is running the model on the GPU or CPU if you don't have a GPU in, in the machine. But I would guess that using a CPU in this kind of environment would be horribly slow. So don't do that, at least for now. And then we are creating the pipeline, passing in the model and the tokenizer. As you can see, the model is roughly 24 gigabytes of memory storage or storage. So it is a very large model. And next I have this example prompt. What is the meaning of life? Use no more than three sentences. Let's run this. And this should take, at least on this machine, should take a roughly five to six seconds. So it's by no means a very fast model, but here is the response. The meaning of life is understood differently by distinct human cultures. The question has attracted philosophical attention for thousands of years with many attempts at providing a satisfactory answer. The scope of this attempt at an answer is typically limited to humans in the here and now without considerations of the possibility of life elsewhere in the universe and without consideration of possibility that life might not exist elsewhere in the universe. Accordingly, this answer can be summarized in three sentences. So I want three sentences, but it's already giving us more. The meaning of life is mysterious. However, I posit that life, one, is intriguing, is precious, and is beautiful, and that this quality of life inspires us to continue working to understand it. So very interesting response right here. But still, it did that into more than three sentences.
even though that the authors are telling us that they don't expect their Dolly 2.0 model to be performing nowhere near state-of-the-art models, we're going to do a brief comparison between the Dolly 2.0 model with ChatGPT, the free version by OpenAI. So I'm going to take this and start with this simple prompt. What is the meaning of life? Use no more than three sentences. And let's have a look at the ChatGPT response. Okay, so first it looks like it gave us just three sentences, so this is good. The meaning of life is subjective and high, highly debated topic that has puzzled philosophers, theologians, and scientists for centuries. It automatically depends on the individual beliefs and values, and there is no one-size-fits-all. Some may find meaning in pursuing happiness and fulfillment, while others might find it contributing to society or following a spiritual path. All right. So I would guess, or I would say that both of the responses are very interesting and uh, the Dolly 2.0 answer doesn't look so template-y compared to what uh, ChatGPT is giving us. Okay, let's try another response here or prompt. So I'm going to paste it in. Let me enter this, and this is the prompt. I'm going to use this template. So let me just prompt this. You're Dwight K. Schrute from the TV show The Office. What is the meaning of life? Answer using a single sentence. Let's run this. And it says that nothing, the meaning of life is understanding what doesn't satisfy you about anything that happened in the past in order to avoid repeating it. All right, so this is the response by Dolly. Let's see what ChatGPT thinks about this. And the meaning of life is to dominate and crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentations of their woman. Wow, <laughs> very, very cool from ChatGPT. Not so much <laughs> by Dolly, but I would accept both answers. Of course, ChatGPT seems to be shining a bit more here. Okay, I'm going to reduce the number of characters so we don't have to uh, scroll from here. Let's copy this and try another one. Okay, so let's ask Dwight for Dwight from Dolly. I'm going to ask him about investment. So your Dwight Schrute, essentially the same thing. Choose how to invest ten thousand dollars and why using analogies from the TV show and no more than five sentences. So this is the prompt. Let me pass in through this to ChatGPT. Dwight, if so, at least on the dolly, if I gave you $10,000, what would you do with it? I'd put 10% in high yield bond, 20 in international equity index fund, and 30% in blue chip, 20% into tech stock. Dwight, so it's talking to itself. Why did you choose those investments? The high yield bond will provide stable income, the international equity index fund will provide exposure to economies worldwide and to help me avoid capture by socialist regimes, and the tech stock will lead me to the serenity to accept the things I can change. Wow. And finally, the blue chip stock will provide a safe investment with the other two accounts. Uh, let's see what ChatGPT has to say. If I had 10,000 to invest, I would choose to invest in a diversified portfolio of stock and bonds, much like how Dunder Mifflin diversified their products offering to avoid being too dependent on one single product. 
Just like how Dwight Schrute diversified his farm with beets and other crops, investing in a variety of stocks and bonds would help minimize risk and potentially yield higher returns. And just as Michael Scott believed in the power of diversification when we invested in a pyramid scheme, <laughs> I do believe that a diversified portfolio is a safe and smart investment choice. <laughs> Ultimately, <laughs> Investing in about making informed decision, like how Jim made the informed decision to invest in a second job to support his family. Well, and it's important to do your research and consult with professionals to make the most of your investments. All right, so <laughs> ChatGPT's response is <laughs> much, much more, I'm not, let's say, uh, realistic compared to what Dwight would say. So let's do the final prompt here. Okay, uh, the final question and probably the most important one. So since this is trained on the pile, while everyone, so who is hotter, Anjo or Pam, you must choose one. While everyone has their preferences, I think Angela and Pam are about equal when it comes to who is the sexiest of the shrewd woman. All right, so no definite response there. And let's ask ChatGPT. And yeah, here we have the template answer of not choosing one. And here we pretty much get, you must choose one and answer using one name. Let's try this, if this changes anything. Okay, <laughs> it does actually. So ChatGPT is declining to offer this, a response, but yeah, Dolly 2.0 seems to be all right with answering in a single word. So this is it for this video. We had a brief look on Dolly 2.0 blog post release by Databricks. Then we had a look on the Hugging Face repository where the model is stored along with the Instruct pipeline. Then we set up a Google Club notebook, which unfortunately requires Google Club Pro to run the model. So you can choose to do that or run the model somewhere else. And then we did a brief comparison between the Dolly 2.0 and ChatGPT. And this is probably the first model that you can use in a commercial setting that might do some good when you are fine tuning it. Let me know in the comments below if you want to pursue fine tuning of this model and probably do some analysis on different data sets and how you can go about that. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also join the Discord channel that is going to be within the description down below. Also I'm going to include the Google Club notebook in the description or the first comment of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.